Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Worship at Nine and First Presbyterian in Hutchinson. To everyone here and those watching online, my name is Cassandra and we hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Today, Keith will share with us the greatest blessing of all. Please take time to fill in your connection card that you'll find in the pew in front of you. We'd like to get to know you and you can write any prayer requests on the back of the card. The children can go with me to Kids Zone after our opening worship songs. Next Sunday will be the start of Advent, and our theme this year is Stay a While with Jesus. On Christmas Eve, we will not have any morning worship, just our normal Christmas Eve candlelight services at 5 and 9 p.m. Our 5 p.m. is a family-style service led by our worship group, and it will be an interactive telling of the Christmas story. The children this year will play an important part in telling the story, and everyone will also be included with the congregation telling the story. We are really looking forward to this new look of our 5 p.m. service. Our 9 p.m. lessons and carols will be led by our choir. Please invite family and friends to fill in both of these services as we celebrate the birth of the King of Kings. Thank you to everyone who supported our Leave the Lights On food drive. It was a huge success. I hope you looked at our glass outside and saw how it's filling up with our pledge drive. Thank you if you've already given your Gift to God cards, and if you haven't done so, please leave them in the offering boxes at the back, or you can mail them into the office. Your Gift of God cards really help us plan for the next year. We thank you for your great support of the work here at First Presbyterian Church. Now I invite you to watch our opening call to worship. morning. Thank you for uh, braving the weather. Uh, I thought I would be here on, on, on my own, so thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, stay safe. But we're going to worship, no matter how many come, no matter how many's here. And for all those listening and watching on, online, we, we do want to say a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we have so many blessings and our blessing series is coming to an end, and really this is the last week of that, and then we're in, into Advent. But there's just, so, God has done many great things, and that's what our first song is. It's called Great Things. Let's stand. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Heroes of heaven, you conquered the grave. You 
free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lift is high. Oh God, you have done great things. through every storm and you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and I know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things God you do great things Hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done God, you do great try this is a new song we did it a few weeks ago um, as you can see when we're doing new songs I don't plan for them to be on Sundays when there's lots and lots of snow and we're, the singers are gone and, but you know God is the exact same no matter what's going on in life God's the exact same no matter what's happening and, and I think we tend to forget that we see all the bad things and we forget that God's just the same. God is God. God's in control. Uh, and this song is called The Same God. I'm calling on the God of Jay. Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant Now I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean
Oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. Now I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faith. prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing then you still providing now you are the same God you are the same God you moved in power then God moved Seated. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for all the provisions that you give us, all the things that you do for us. And Lord, we thank you for the snow, for the moisture. Pray that you'll keep people safe. We're thankful that we can keep warm. Thank you that when I came in this morning, the place was like a little icebox because the heating wasn't working. And thank you to Mark and David for all their work to get it, to get it going, for it to be cozy, for clearing the footpaths and the car parks. And so often we forget about all the stuff that goes on around us. And Lord, we just ask that you will bless all those who surround us with care, who look after our needs, Pray for those who are traveling, that you'll give them safe travel. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6, 6 to 15, and I'm reading from the message version. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. 
I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That you will protect against sob stories and arm twisting. And God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything. More than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist put it, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy and reckless abandon. His right living and right giving ways never run out and never wear out. The most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, healthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Carrying out this social relief work involves far more than helping meet the bare needs of poor Christians. It also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgiving to God. This relief offering is a prod to live at your very best, showing your gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters, and really towards everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagance of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession for whatever you need. Thank God for this gift, his gift, no language can praise it enough. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much. I owe you one. Lord, we thank you for this food. I appreciate it. You're the best. This is such a blessing. Too many times these sayings become an empty platitude. But how often do we take the time to truly show gratitude, to be still, and reflect on the kindness we've been shown, to realize our blessings are not something we are owed. When kindness is offered, when grace is extended, a passive thanks doesn't deliver the impact intended. So let's actively consider the power of being grateful and meditate on the ways our God has remained faithful. Be thankful for life with its valleys and hills from the peace of nature to its exciting thrills. Be thankful for the people we have in our lives. Family, friends, co-workers, their support helps us thrive. Be thankful for ourselves, who we are and who we're becoming. After all, we are wonderfully made and everything he creates is stunning. So be thankful for the creator, the giver of all things. The one who sets aside our faults and adorns us with robes and rings. Take a moment to breathe and be grateful for all he's done. For the provision and the strength, the surprises and the fun. His unifying love that he knows us all by name. He is able and we are grateful that in him we are all the same. So as we gather together to celebrate the blessings of the past year, eating the food, playing the games, taking the pictures, feeling the cheer, we can't forget to take a moment to be still, let our feet be planted, and find a new appreciation for the blessings we've been granted. Thanksgiving's over. Or probably our waistlines know that it's over after all the food that's been consumed. I hope you had a wonderful time and felt blessed. There's so many things to give thanks to God for. 
um, as we said in the announcements, um, or leave the lights on, every year gets bigger. And this church gives more and more every year. And this is the biggest amount. Don't know the figures, because I just know it's much bigger than what it has been. And your generosity and the generosity of the community is so appreciated. We, we prayed last week for the toy run. Is all the, everybody gathering outside there? Uh, I know Scott's on the committee for it. And what, what an amazing sight when I was leaving here to see all those bicycles uh, going out to all the ch children, so many ch children. Uh, it's a real blessing. And there's so many things that are happening around us in this community that we give thanks to God for. Because to me, this is what it's all, all about. This is what giving is all about. Our God wants to pour astonishing, mind-blowing blessings on you, on me, and on his church, and on this community, and across the world. We're getting ready for the Advent season. If you didn't know that, that's why Christmas tree's up, all right? If you haven't got your Christmas tree up, go home this afternoon, get it up, get it ready. Advent season's coming. When God sent his only son as his gift to us, the greatest gift that can ever be given, no greater gift has ever been given than Jesus coming as a baby. Because he was coming with a purpose. He was coming to live his life and to die and to rise again for our sins. There has never been and there will never be a greater gift than God giving Jesus to us. God was willing to give his son. And this is why we talk about God asking us to give back generously. Because he has given so generously to each one of us. And this all starts with us surrendering our hearts and lives to him. It's about you and me finding out our purpose and finding out that our purpose is only found in Jesus. The greatest blessing of all is Jesus. That's where everything flows from. I can remember the Holy Spirit nudging me and saying, Keith, you're not too enthusiastic about serving God or giving to God as you are to other things. Wake up, Keith. I want you to become a generous person. See the good things, the great things I've given you in life. And let me do something big in your life. And that all had to start by me recognizing that that's who I was. There were things that I was much more excited about than being at church or following God. Following my favorite soccer team. Goes against all my grain to call it soccer, sorry. But I have to, don't I? Because uh, if I say football, which the rest of the world say, you all think I'm talking about the Chiefs or something like that. But those things were passionate for me. And I had more passion with that there than I had about following God. And God was saying, things are going to have to change, my boy. Things are going to have to change. I remember being at a conference, being challenged many years ago, on being an enthusiastic server of the living God, what that meant. Can you remember? Again, God said to me, Keith, it's time. It's time for you to get excited about me because I'm excited about you. And God's saying that today to each one of us. He's excited about you because he created you and me with a purpose. When I read that God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything. I love that. The question is, are we ready for anything and everything? Is church ready for the anything and everything that God wants to throw at us and say, here, take, take this? And this was something that I knew when I heard those words that I really wanted and needed. I want to be, and I wanted to be a person, and I still do, who's ready for anything and everything. That's why I annoy people at times, because I'm ready to do something different all the time. 
Because God is always doing a new thing. God is always in the process of moving forward, never standing still. And when I was willing to say, I'm ready for anything and everything, what a journey that has been. It's been a journey that I could never have imagined. And I shouldn't be able to imagine it because it's coming from God. It's so big. God's plans and God's purpose for us are so big, we can't, with our human mind, totally fathom what he has in store for us. I have to ask you today, are we ready? Are we ready to receive the greatest blessing of all, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, as the one who directs us and leads us, as the one that we are following. Because if we're not, we're missing out big time. Christy and I believe that God is going to do greater things here than he has ever done before. And can I just state, that has nothing to do with the two of us. It's all to do with who God is and what God wants to do. We serve a big God with big plans. We try to keep God in a little box that makes us feel comfortable and good. And God doesn't fit in a box. I have tried serving Jesus following the opening words of this reading today. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop and a lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want us to take some time this morning just to think that, that over and make up our mind, what do we want? Do we want to see a big harvest or do we just want to see a little tiny thing that we can cope with? I hope and I pray that we're never going to be stingy planters. You see, the more that we give and the more we reach out, the bigger blessings that will come. It's hard to come to terms with the fact that we benefit. We benefit in such a wonderful way when we start to follow God's direction and his purpose for our lives. We live in a society that wants to know what will we get out of it? What's the benefit to me if I do do something? And in and, and work, somebody may ask you to do something, you'll think, mm -mm, is that really my job? Mm -mm. How's that going to benefit me? Could somebody else not do that? That's the world that we seem to live in. Well, God's benefits are too many to even to start to mention. But I can testify to you that if you allow God to work in your heart, he will strengthen our faith enormously. He'd be generous with the investments that we're making. And these, and these are investments for eternity. The more that we surrender and let the Holy Spirit have complete control of our lives, the more like Jesus we become. Now, who doesn't want to be more like Jesus? I don't mean we have to look like him, but we just have to live our lives like him with his big heart for everyone, wanting to care and reach out and love for everyone. When Paul wrote this letter, he was concerned for the church in Corinth. And it went a lot deeper than them just putting on a good appearance. It seemed great on the outside, but Paul knew there was something more wrong. And he wanted to go deeper. Even today, churches can put on a good appearance. But, God, but Paul knew that what he wanted to see was their hearts changed at the deepest level. Our hearts need to change. He didn't just want them to give. He wanted their hearts to change as they gave. Because as they gave and as they served, they became more like Jesus. So their hearts changed. Paul doesn't want us to change our behavior. God doesn't want us to actually change our behavior. He wants to change us from our selfishness. 
He doesn't just want our behavior to change. He wants our hearts to change. And Paul is urging the church to have changed hearts and to sow bountifully. Paul wanted to give in such a generous, open-handed way that would lead to a huge harvest of souls. He was really talking about revival, if we put it in those older terms. And this is something that we really need today. We need a revival. Paul's message here is clear. Don't give sparingly, but become someone who gives as generously as you possibly can. We cannot outgive God. It can't happen. But we can be more generous in giving him more of our time, our money, our energy to serve him and others. And to do it with a smile on our face. To do it because we enjoy doing it because we're becoming more and more like him. And when we do that, we receive such great blessings from God far more than we can repay. God blesses generous givers. God will give you what you need so that you continue to be generous. What I've come to notice over the years is that God seems to give generous people more so that they can keep on becoming more generous. I've known so many people who are so generous and what they give of their time, their money, their resources. All to serve God. They do it quietly. They don't want any pomp and ceremony. They don't want to be up at the front saying, look at me, look what I'm doing. And God keeps giving them more because they keep giving more. It's amazing. What a, what a model for life this is, to give more and then to get more so that we can keep on giving more and experience even more joy. Amazing. Amazing what God does. God will use our gifts to bless others. We read that in verses 12 and 15. When you give, others benefit. And Paul mentions three specific ways that others will benefit. First one is it will supply the needs of the saints, it said. In verse 12, the poor will be fed, churches will be planted, missionaries will be supported, the gospel will be advanced. All through giving, giving of ourselves. The second, it will cause others to thank God and give glory to him. Verses 12 and 13, when you give, you will be an answer to someone else's prayer. When you give, you will be an answer to someone else's prayer. When God uses you to meet their needs, they will thank and glorify God because of the gift that you've given. And thirdly, it will bring you closer to others. In verse 14, they will long for and pray for you because of your generosity to them. What a blessing. What a blessing this is. You see, a generous heart is infectious to those around us because it's an example of Jesus' true love to all people. We need to have a revival of lavish giving and strategic living to see a revival of his grace poured out on all our communities, all through the power of the Holy Spirit. Randy Alcorn wrote, when the body of Christ gets serious about learning and living out God's instructions, concerning money and possessions, Christ's cause will be furthered and Jesus will be exalted. The greatest blessing of all is Jesus. We want to make Jesus known. We want to make Jesus seen by reaching out to others. The greatest gift is salvation from our sins because the price is already paid. Not only that, but you and I will be changed. It's interesting how Paul concludes this sanction. Thanks be to God for this inexpressible gift. What Paul is referring to is our generous Savior. 
our generous God who gives life for us. Paul doesn't end this letter with it being all about ourselves and our generosity. No, he ends it with the generosity of Jesus because everything comes from Jesus, from God. We are nothing without him in our lives. His generosity transforms you and me so that we can become generous people. Are we ready today to receive God's generous blessing? I want you to experience this more than anything because when I experienced it, it changed me completely. I want you to have a generous heart so that you are a blessing to others. I want you to experience the exhilaration of cheerfully giving to others. And if you have Jesus, you don't need anything more. We live in a world that wants more and more. But all we need is Jesus. When Hudson Taylor, famous missionary, opened a bank account for the China Inland Mission that he was forming, the application form asked for his asset list to see whether they would give him money or allow him to open an account. And Taylor wrote the following as the sum of his assets. 10 pounds and all the promises of God. 10 pounds and all the promises of God. You have everything you need to be a, cha a generous, cheerful giver when you have God, when you have Jesus in your life. So let's get started. Let's make a difference. Let's let the Holy Spirit move in power through each of us and through this church as we share his blessings with the people of Hutchison and beyond. I want you to picture, it's easier even to do it today than any other Sunday. Just take a look at the seats that are empty around you. God wants these seats filled with people who are searching for Jesus, who are looking for God's saving grace, who are looking to see what God has to offer. And we show that by having generous hearts, by being a generous church, by being generous individuals who will reach out to those in need. The moment that I trusted Jesus as my Savior, he forgave all my sins, past, present, and future. This amazing gift of grace not only ensured that my ultimate destination would be in heaven, but it enabled me to have a relationship with the creator of the universe, which is mind-blowing. So on that first Christmas so long ago, God gave us the greatest gift of all. He gave of himself. He gave his son. And as we approach Advent, we will remember the angels telling the shepherds, do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all people. Today our Savior is born in the city of David. And he is Christ the Lord. There will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. This is Christmas. This is what Christmas means. As we reflect on these words, that we truly know that Jesus was, is, and will always be the greatest gift of all and a gift for everyone. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you were willing to give the greatest gift ever given, your son, given for my mistakes and my sins, for our mistakes, for every person here, every person that's watching online, every person in this world. 
you gave this gift of your son so that we could have a relationship with you. Lord, we th are so thankful. We're so thankful that you loved us enough to give us your son. Help us now to grab hold of this great blessing and this great promise that all those who come to believe in you shall be saved and have eternal life. And so this morning as we start to walk into Advent, Lord, I ask that we will be changed. I ask that we will be people who will reflect you in everything that we do. I ask that we will share the gift of Jesus with those that we meet, not just this season, but throughout our lives and throughout the year and beyond. You are the greatest gift. Let's make sure everyone has that gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we finish today, let me invite you just to, before you go out into the cold, to grab another hot coffee and um, a donut hole back there. And just to spend a little while, not just rushing out, but just spending a little while chatting to each other, sharing our hearts together, and then let's go and share it with others. Last song is called Trust in You. Let's stand. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers Then I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead that you have not seen. So in all things be my life and bread. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. strength and comfort you are a steady hand you are my firm foundation the rock on which i stand your ways are always higher your plans are always good there's not a place where i'll go you've not already stood when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, 
I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 Lord, may we trust in you in everything that we do, in everything that we say, in everything that we are. And may we share the greatest gift of all with our friends, family, and the people around us. May we share Jesus. We ask it in his precious name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Be safe on the way home. And... Uh, We'll see you next week.